Now, just imagine being able to feed and nourish yourself through prana, through energy. Is that even possible? Well, you may have heard the term breatharian assigned to people who live without the need for physical food and sometimes even liquid. My guest in this latest episode is Jasmine, and she's lived without the need for physical food for 27 years. This is a conversation you'll definitely want to hear. You may or may not have heard of the term breatharian, and if you have, you'll know it's often assigned to people who choose not to take in food and sometimes even liquid. And you're probably wondering now, is that even possible? Well, my guest today knows it's possible because she's practiced that lifestyle for over 27 years. Except rather than using the term breatharian, she uses a more accurate description of source feeding. So welcome, Jasmaheen. I'm particularly excited about the direction of our conversation today. So welcome to the Possibility Hub. And Thank maybe- you. My pleasure. And maybe we should kick off with, you know, breatharian, breatharian versus source feeding and the yes. reason that you prefer that more accurate description of source feeding and what it actually mm. means, what it is. Yes. You know, the last few years, the light beams that are overseeing the delivery of this possibility into this world have become very, very particular because You know, you might write a book and it goes to a publisher and they might change the title. My original book on this was Pranic Nourishment. And I thought the word nourishment was so important. And then that got changed to Living on Light. And that read well in German or whatever for the original publication. And then people pick up the word breatharian, which was a word that Wiley Brooks who began this movement, you could say, in the 1970s termed. And when I spent time with him, he said, it means breather of God. And I thought, well, that's Wiley's term. But it was so interesting how these beings have come back after, since 93, when they brought this possibility into my life without me looking for it or expecting it. And then what's happened since with... I guess just people doing, having different realities as they've gone through the experience because there's probably 120,000 people who have this gift now and there's about another half a million who are in training in a very gentle, natural, organic way because their heart of hearts, they feel it's possible. But our light being friends wanted to bring it back to this source feeding is being free from every single human hunger because you think of how many people eat physical food for emotional reasons or mental reasons because they're a bit bored or all sorts of reasons so if we could tap in to an energy that's everywhere vibrating in us in the 99.9 percent space of an atom vibrating around us and if we can flip and make that the dominant frequency my interest is What happens to the human system? And what I've found is we just lose physical hunger, emotional hunger, mental hunger, and you could even say etheric or spiritual hunger. You just, you just fed. We eat all the time, but we eat differently, which is why I love the source feeding, because we're feeding, but just in a different way. Yes, I like that concept. And it's so true that, you know, we're hungry emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, mm-hmm. and food um, and drink is, is what we do. And, you know, even when I go out and about and I see that there's just, you know, uh, food shop after food shop after food shop after mm-hmm. food shop, yeah. and also the habit we're in of, okay, it's mm-hmm. breakfast this time, we must eat. Oh, it's mm-hmm. mid-morning, we must eat. Oh, it's lunchtime, we mm-hmm. must eat. And how about you can eat um, and you're fed in a completely different way. Now, you also said that there were some um, changes in the system that happen when you choose this lifestyle. And that was something that interested me because you said this came about in in 1993, wasn't something you planned. And I believe you went on a a three-week program Uh, And that's what I'm interested in, what actually happens in in the system, uh, you know, in 
that, that shifts? Look, it was interesting because um, just for the audience, Carol gave me permission to talk about everything. <laughs> <laughs> and when I was attracted to all of this in the early 90s, it was after 20-something years of meditation, and I've always been very metaphysical. And as a child, I was also interested in a solution to world health, world hunger problems, because I saw there was a lot of inequity in the world. And I think when you're seeking something that's beneficial for human evolution, it's amazing how you get supported, especially if you could almost say it's like your pre-descension blueprint, yes. like something you've agreed to bring into the world because we come to give gifts and receive gifts. And so I wasn't looking for anything like this on the physical not taking food level, although I was uh, very refined in my diet. I was vegan, mainly raw, because it just felt better. But when I locked into it, it was a bit of a shock. And it took me a long time to understand and then to look back and say, this isn't just a 6,000 year old tradition from Qigong masters who discovered it in China, 4,000 years with yogis in India, but it's futuristic science. And as we up level, as we ascend, because that was my original interest was ascension. I just wanted to be the best version of me that I could be. And so I was prepared to live the yogini life while also raising kids and doing everything I was doing as a career woman, but to do it all. This was my life. I was going to do it all, <laughs> as women often find. And I just wanted to continue to be true to my heart. And my heart was calling me for up-leveling, up-leveling, like this more. It's like this inner voice just says, Jazz, there's more, there's more. You can have all of this, but there's more, there's more. And your happiness will never come from outside of yourself. Your happiness will come with that dropping back into perfect union of your already ascended yogini, pure and perfect nature that's in everybody. But we just get so distracted. So let's say we as a civilization keep sharing fields of possibility, like the possibility hub, <laughs> what you're doing, and people do come back more into union with their, not their ego personality self that keeps us stuck and limited and unhappy sometimes or deliriously happy, but where we can just stop that external identification with ego self and come back to open, to fall back into, because it's always there, to merge, to relax to something so pure and so powerful that every single human being loses all their hunger. What happens to society? Do we go into deep into unity consciousness as a unified, harmonious, respectful, loving, kind society? who's not hungry. And so the beings of light that I'm working with, they're in those realms. And they're like, yep, we transcended. We not only went through individual ascension, but we went through global ascension. And this is our formula. And you need to understand that source feeding is a natural outcome of this, where you are fed on all levels by something free that you all have vibrating already inside of you you just got to turn up the volume so this is the process that you take people through in the dark room retreat um to to a degree and and i just wanted to add because you asked me a question we didn't answer but when this came in in 93 it was like trial technology and we found problems with the technology people died in my book that's not okay you know, they were doing something their bodies weren't ready for, but they felt they were. And so I complained up the line and said, I will not be associated with anything that has the potential to kill people. Bring me a new system. And so over the years, we've developed a very slow, safe, organic system, which we apply in darkroom, meaning lifestyle, 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 because it's about time in life. How you spend your time determines your frequency, which determines how the quantum field biofeedback 
is responding to you and it depends on where you end up magnetized and anchored in regarding realms and as jesus said kingdom of heavens within you as buddha says there is the pure land so it's like what about this realm of unity consciousness it's on earth too there's duality ego driven realities and then there's a fine tune fine tune fine tune by lifestyle safely so that you pump up the volume of another energy that's so pure and so perfect and that changes the magnetic keynote of what we're transmitting and we end up anchored really in a state of grace in a state of awe in a state of wonder and we're on the same planet but in a different zone <laughs> Well, I know that was my purpose in, in uh, booking to come onto the darkroom retreat was, you know, to uh, ex an expansion of consciousness. Mm. Um, and yeah. when you feel lighter, um, you become light uh, and you're open to, uh, you see more, you hear more, everything's tuned in. And I was still, and of course, you use that word up leveling, which I, I love. It's a, a nice, nice term. Yet I'm still wondering what physically happens because there must be such a shift physically from a body that's geared to take in um, physical food mm -hmm. to taking mm -hmm. in um, nourishment from the air from from different ways from through nature. Yeah. What, what what are the physical changes? Okay. So um, the way that we work, that source energy, as we said, is what's 99.99% space in the atoms or what the um, quantum scientists or others may call the unified field. It's vibrating in us. It's not Mother Nature chi because there's many different styles of chi. There's mountain chi, there's ocean chi, there's all the types of mother nature chi there's also cosmic chi there's also essence chi and the essence chi is like the very baseline of creation that chi is love wisdom power when love and wisdom unify then you have power and it's a very pure frequency spectrum in dark room it's like we enter the divine mother's womb of pure love that's how we ask people to see it. Now, remember, energy becomes that which we label it as well, because energy will do anything that you as the master want it to do when you are in your mastery. And quantum is always saying, hello, master, how are you? What do you want? What do you want? So clarity is so important. So we enter into dark room like we're going into the divine mother's womb of infinite love and dark matter, unified field potential, unexpressed potential. And from that vibration of pure love comes the sacred geometric patterning of light. And from that light, those sacred patterns come creation. So that original frequency of pure love is source. It's what feeds us. But remember, it, it, it births universes. So if that's pure love is vibrating around us and through us all the time, and it can give birth to new universes, why on earth can't it give us breakfast, lunch, and dinner? <laughs> Aha, so that's interesting. So when we go into dark room, one of the things we flip with people is there's a big difference between fasting and being source fed. Yeah. In fasting, it takes about three days for the stomach to shrink. Now, I'm working with people who are really strong yogis. Nearly everybody who comes to me has been meditating for decades. Very rare that they haven't. So they're very open to these frequencies of peace and, and, and their own pure essence nature, which is guiding them. It's their own inner wise one that says, dark rooms for you or source feedings for you or this is for you. And they're used to listening to that. So by the time they come along, they've usually been vegan for a long time. And if your listeners are interested, then we have Dr. Zach Bush, whose work I always promote because he has good research on being vegan. Then they're also adding yoga often or Tai Chi or Qigong to just learn to work with energy currents. They're always good in their meditation. And as a consequence, they've been listening to the voice of the body. 
And so they're not eating out of habit. They're eating out of a body. I as the essence who dwells within you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I appreciate you. Are you hungry? Body goes, no. So you don't take physical food. If it says yes, then the next thing is, okay, body, what do you want? Not to what I think you should have, but what's your calling? And it may be banana because maybe you're a bit low on potassium or something like that. Maybe your lifestyle of yoga, qigong, meditation, etc., is flooding your system with pure energy, but you're not quite ready for source feeding, but you're listening to what your body is calling for as your stomach shrinks, which it will. In three days, it's gone from you know, a lot of food to nothing. So you slowly, slowly, slowly get comfortable. We recommend people become comfortable fasting. Understand what fasting feels like, the mental clarity, the benefits of fasting, and you'll watch all these things rise within you. Like when people come to dark room, a lot of the men after three, four nights, they're dreaming of food. <laughs> <laughs> and all they think about is when I get out of here, I'm going to go to the dining room, and I'm, 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 which they can do, not what we recommend. And then they're like suffering for 24 hours because they ate too much because the stomach had shrunk. So look, there's different methodology. But as we say to people, if this is something you've pre-agreed to do before your dissension and you can find out through kinesiology, then you already have loaded up your body of light with everything you need to make this a success for you if it's something you're going to demonstrate physically this life. So you just have to listen. Go into stasis. Sit down, shut up and ask to just really be flooded with that pure divine love that lies at your core and open to hear its wisdom and to just sense what's right for you. That's the first step. Get to know and trust the inner one who's giving you the gift of life because it will guide you through this in the right way and the right time with you for you and it's a path of love it's a path of grace it's a path of joy and if it's a path of struggle then you need a little adjustment in your methodology so this also brings in a lot of the um you use the word up leveling but also the recoding the language mm. that you're using to communicate with your organs yes as you said to check in hmm uh, mm. What is it that my body needs, but also checking in what even particular organs. And I know that you have some beautiful meditations. And then with the recoding, one of your books was uh, specifically on recoding and utilizing your language in different ways. Yeah. Do you want to explain a little about that? Yeah. Look, I think the first thing we have to flip into in source feeding is that the order of command, the chain of command. And remember the yogis and the wise ones have talked about this forever. You have your physical body, which I always kind of liken like a foot soldier in the army. And then you have your emotional body, which is kind of like the corporal or lieutenant. And then the general is the mental body. But we need to serve the king, the queen. And the king, the queen is that pure, already enlightened, ascended part of us that is giving us the gift of life. So when we talk to the system to recode it, because we are energy constructs, we have to come from that point, not from monkey mind, not from the general, not from the emotional body. We have to go back into stillness to feel ourselves as the kings and the queens and the wise ones that we are. And from that point, we begin to sense. And I like to begin with, oh, body temple. You are magnificent. Physical body, emotional body, mental body. I love you, 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 until it goes and feels it. I, as the essence being I am, as the formlessness I am vibrating through this form, 
I just want to say how much I love you and I appreciate you. And from this moment on, I am asking for you to feed from these source energies, feed physically, feed emotionally, feed mentally, human mind, align yourself, marry yourself with the mind of supreme intelligence. So the ultimate wisdom that I can attain and grasp can flow through me in every moment. Emotional body, align yourself to the zone of virtues, the virtues of bliss, of peace, of joy, of whatever I need to be fed in the most supreme manner emotionally. So the emotional buzz I get from physical food is completely inconsequential. Physical body, open to receive all your vitamins, all your minerals, all your proteins, everything that you need, open to drink it now from the vibration of the formlessness flowing through each atom and the form. Feed yourself from source. Bio system, I love you, I love you, I love you. I'm asking you to up level to the next perfect version you are and are ready to be. And I ask that all of this, all of this happens in the perfect way, the perfect time for me with joy and ease and grace. And that is my command as the essence I am within this all. Make this my experiential truth. Now, some of you are already going, yes, 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 yes. That's all you have to say. We just said it all for you. Yes. Because I used to work in computer programming, making rich people richer. I was a programmer. <laughs> and now I do cosmic coding <laughs> and make pe making people richer. Because what real wealth is, is the experience of the truth of who we really are. That's so and clarity. Beautiful. Yes, and that's beautiful that you've actually given us some recoding there. And then I was sort of bathing in, in that. Yet I know there's going to be some people, and, and this is what you have come across, I know, since um, 1993, you know, that say that's impossible. You have to have vitamins, you have to have minerals, um, you know, you have to uh, take in food. Also on the love. Um, you know, I, I see people where they know that no amount of looking in the mirror going, I love you, I love you, I love you, or I'm grateful. They, they can't think of anything that they could be grateful for. And that self-love yeah. is so challenging. And, yeah. you know, I know, you know, it, it, people may think that your life has been all oh, this, you know, like just lovely, lovely, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> um, you know, it helps people to know that there's certainly, you know, that that isn't, that there are some challenges to overcome. And also mm. the challenges that you have to, had to overcome in terms of a society that believes that it is not possible to be source fed. I mean, that was a huge, huge rod that you were handed that this is, you need to go out and do this work. How did you handle all of that? I once complained to one of my ascended master friends, Saint Germain, and I said, why me? I'm so, you know, I'm not a yogi. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist. I'm a simple woman. And um, he just said, um, why you? It's because you're so naive. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, naive? And he said, well, you believe that everyone who meditates has experienced pure love. And that's not true. I didn't know that. And he said, you believe that um, every, you know, that everyone who has then experienced pure love would know the infinite possibilities of all of this. And in the beginning, it was hard because people wanted to know how is it possible. And I, I just felt like it's all about love. It's all about love. Mm -hmm. And people hate that when I carry on like that. <laughs> you know, it's very hippy dippy and all of that but i've had to study the science of it and it really is about like attracting like and as gandhi said be the change you wish to see in the world and you know for me i studied metaphysics from the time i was about seven beginning with the christian religion and then i moved through the ancient vedas and then i've looked at all the world's religions and spiritual traditions and they all talk about the same thing 
they all talk about this pure and perfect part of us and they have different names for it. So it's like it's impossible to work from here regarding love. Love, divine love, must be an experience to be set free from limitation, you know. So for me, when I was 16, my very first meditation, it was like the universe slammed me and said, we're going to get this one addicted to love so she knows what love can deliver. And so my very first meditation with ancient Vedic techniques, my third eye just exploded with light and the world's just disappeared. There was just light, light, light. And with the light just came wave after wave after wave of so much love. And I just lost all my human hungers. It didn't last long enough, but it came <laughs> enough. And I became completely addicted to divine love because it felt divine. So that's what I labeled it. And I completely unhooked from being a normal girl. I was no longer interested in boys or dating or romantic love. I just wanted to go and live in a little ashram and meditate and feel more love, more love, give me more love. But that wasn't to be, you know, like many people, I ended up getting married, having children, being a single mom, making money, losing money, having cancer, oh, all sorts of stuff because I needed to embody more wisdom and more virtues. And that's how we do it. Life sometimes. And as I've gotten older, because I'm now mid-60s, and I just don't see anything as a problem anymore because I go, hmm, a potential challenge, but I know I'm going to gain wisdom, I hope, and I know I'm going to get the gift of virtues from this. So universe, show me the gift here, show me the virtues, and show me the wisdom I'm here to learn. And as soon as you open, in a challenging situation to the wisdom and to the, the virtues that wisdom will give you, it comes quickly. And then you integrate it because you see, because you're looking to see. You're no longer blaming anyone. You're no longer shifting responsibility. Maybe you're living by universal law and you're going, well, okay, we're all interconnected. Everything I am affects the whole. That's the law of one. We are all running by the law of resonance, that I'm a vibrating system of energy and I have to be very conscious of what I'm vibrating into the field because it's affecting everything around me. And you become very much interested in self-mastery, self-responsibility, and maybe you code that all I want is to be a nourishing presence for all sentient life through all realms, teach me how. And from that humility comes great change. And the, I love being on my knees in surrender. I don't have a problem with that at all. That life is slammed and slammed and slammed and you're like, oh, I have no idea how to handle this, but I want to know, please deliver to me in this situation a triple win solution a solution that's beneficial for me, beneficial for others and beneficial for the world. And that is a prayer the quantum intelligence will not refuse because what you are seeking is triple win and not just the me, me, me game. And I think a lot of your audience and people I know, we know about grace. We love grace. We love synchronicity. We like magic. And that means you've got to drop into the zone where the grace and the synchronicity and the magic flow the most consistent, which goes back to lifestyle, 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 and your heart. So you have to be done with the struggle, done with the suffering, done with the limited realities. And even to just say, please show me reveal to me the wisdom from all the traditions of all the holy messengers on earth. Reveal it to me in a way that's right for me, that's for my highest good, so I can experience the wisdom of all the holy ones and all the holy books. Buddha, I open my heart to you to go direct. Christ, I open my heart to you to go direct. I am open to receive and to fully embody all the wisdom here now that is for my highest good, as long as what I'm transmitting is beneficial for all sentient life.
Yes, 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 yes. Lock this in, make this my truth. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Gosh, these transmissions and these recoding, what a gift. And I'm noticing behind you, and I have to, to ask you, you, you also, and maybe this is part of your, you know, love and, and gifts and, and maybe a nice reminder to people to tap into their talents because you also paint and sing. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> yes, that, that's a sacred geometric patterning of a, a dimensional portal. And I actually um, put that together with other people who'd been doing some work and I took it to another level as well. But, you know, look, if you think you're sleeping maybe an hour a night, which I did for many, many, many years, sometimes I'd lie my body to sleep and it would wake up in 10 minutes and I'd go, come on, body. And it'd be like, I'm done. <laughs> because, see, you're not digesting food anymore. So all that energy you'd use for digestion, you're using in other ways now. And everybody I know who's source-fed get really creative. We all start playing musical instruments eventually. We may not be good at it. I'm not. <laughs> but I still play and have fun. And, and we paint and we dance and we sing because... You just get flooded with so much joy. I mean, yes, we still may have challenges in life, but it's always challenges with loved ones. You know, I've lost a lot of friends this last few years who've left their bodies. I've had friends who've been really affected by the COVID and the pandemic. And I've seen a lot of people be stripped bare of many, many things. And your heart just goes, oh, for them, but you become aware of, of that if you can stay grounded in the rhythm of peace, if you can stay grounded in the zone of compassion and love, then your energetic presence is ben more beneficial for them too. So we do get challenged and we do still sometimes go too deep. I do. I'm too empathetic and I go too deep into the rhythm of duality and oh, then I unhook from all social media. Yes. And then I just come and recharge. I recharge by walking the beach. I recharge by sitting in the tree, around the trees where I live. I recharge by painting. I recharge by doing the things that make our hearts go, I love life. I love life. And, you know, for people who don't feel gratitude, do a gratitude list. You know, every day before I get out of bed, I just lie there and say, I'm so grateful I'm alive. I'm so grateful I have this body. I'm so grateful for all the rain and the storms because it makes my garden grow. I'm so grateful when the sun comes. I'm so grateful for this. I'm so grateful. I just feel grateful. And, and you feel it. You can go back in time to remember a time where you really were overwhelmed with that feeling of gratitude or bliss. You know, when my grandchildren were born, it was like, oh, it was so beautiful. And so you can step back into the memory pools and then you're in real heart gratitude. And then you just keep your heart in gratitude, your brain focused on energy rather than matter, and you and focused on a breath, slow, deep breath, and then you're in breath, heart, brain coherence, and that again sends, changes your signature and you'll find the unified field, quantum field, the benevolence there responds to you differently because you're in breath, heart, brain coherence. Wow. Beautiful. And, and a couple of words that have always stayed with me um, from having gone through some of your programs, your, you have some beautiful online programs available, um, is the silence, stillness, and stasis. And the solitude. So, yes, yeah, stasis is silence, stillness, solitude. Okay. And, and when, when you get into those, that, that state, the, the no thing and everything, because most people in their meditations, it's still busy, 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 busy. Um, and, you know, I always say when you do find that, you know, solitude, stillness, stasis, you know, it's, it's like, instead of going out into the world, everything comes to you 
in a different way. You become that magnet. You become, as I said, from nothing, everything. It's getting to that state and finding that space, particularly when we live in a society of doing, 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 um, yeah. and people taking that time just to, to be still to be. Now, I know you were tasked or given this mission uh, by St. Germain came to you, I believe, and said, this is what you're going to do <laughs> in the world. And it was like, thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> Yet you took up the challenge so that you're very connected with the masters. And I also know that in recent years, they um, came back with a new mission for you. Can yeah. you tell us about that? Nope. Look, it's really interesting because I did, like all of you, we, we merge with patterns of energy we need to merge with, you know, because our heart dictates what we connect with and not the mind. It's the heart. It's like ah, oh, when you're in that the right heart stage, you merge with different patterns and those patterns have consciousness. And so I merged for a while after my Indian guru yogi time with the Ascended Masters and they were the ones who brought in, in 93, this possibility of pranic nourishment as it was delivered to me then. And then after I'd kind of assimilated with them, then I moved into other mattresses. It's like other mattresses just pick you up because you've hit a certain keynote. keynote. And so there's always this merging and blending in and out of patterns of energy, and that's how they talk about it. So then I ended up going a bit intergalactic and connecting with the Intergalactic Federation of Worlds and the Lords of Peace from Venus, and they asked me to set up the Embassy of Peace. But I was originally given the opportunity to leave. You know, the fields dissolved one day, and I found myself in the nothingness. And then my vibration changed and I came into a field of light and they just said, like, oh, your work on earth is done. And I thought about it. I said, really? That's a bit of a shock. Wasn't <laughs> it one thing a Hagen concert? <laughs> it was, it was. And, you know, you people, if you're interested in these stories, have a look on my YouTube channel on inspiring real life stories. So weird things happen in weird places. So from there, I just connected with others and, but I was jobless. It was like, okay, I've finished what I'm born to do. I've chosen to stay. Give me a new job. And the new job was very clearly prepare them for contact. And I must admit, I was a bit connecting source feeding or pranic nourishment with the ancient yogi ways, Qigong masters. I wasn't so aware of it as a natural state of being when you hit unity consciousness as an intergalactic higher dimensional way of being because we will go there eventually as we unify we will eventually find ourselves in a realm like these beautiful beings they're all source fed food doesn't exist in their world there are extraterrestrial civilizations that still harvest that are still in the duality zone that are more technologically advanced they have ufos solid craft they're still doing this but there's other zones, again, with beings who have just freed themselves from all that need for external nourishment. And they operate very, very differently. And many, many people all around the world are just feeling intuitively to lighten up their diet naturally without ever hearing about our work or believing it. It's just happening. They're noticing if they take certain food, they feel bloated. And their body's like, no, I'm done with that frequency. And sometimes they listen and sometimes they don't and they keep feeling bloated <laughs> till eventually they're done. And similarly, there are people who are deep in this vibration of the nothingness of just the no agenda, sweet surrender in the isness and these beings start coming in and making contact and they'll feel presences around them and they're downloading new technologies like a lot of our young ones to eliminate health issues or pollution issues or healing modalities like Star Trek. They all said, William Shatner said that all the devices we were looking at that were very rough as children, us as children grew up and made those devices real. Yes. So all of that was channeled. And so many of us are just receiving downloads, 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 
that are just coming in from the unified realms regarding another way to be in this world that we can up level. We are in a triple level ascension program, which is what my work is now. Not just prepare them for contact, but be aware that there's an individual ascension game going, a global ascension game going, and guess what? For the first time ever, a universal ascension program. And so all our work now is stimulating and supporting the right frequency transmissioning, and this goes back to stasis. So you can unhook from the physical world and zip it, but you can never stop transmissioning. The question is, what are you transmissioning? Are you transmissioning signals of division that perpetuate, perpetuate fear and anxiety and separation? Or are you able to just come into that union within yourself and hold the transmission of peace and hold the transmission and love? And you can zip it, but you can be it. And you can be anywhere in any situation. That's all good. I love that because I have, uh, we all do have so many friends who get stuck in this kind of like pie and soup a mixture of um, media and watching this and watching mm. that and I always um, I very rarely watch um, television and uh, all the news even very careful what I put in my pie and you know yet people are sending you with with you know all these other modalities for for communication sending you videos videos of this and that and these talks and I think, is this what you're you're watching and you're bathing in all the time? Mm. That's mm. you know, and that's of mm. course part of the agenda, bringing bring down and and again, getting people to turn and say, what what do you want to? Um, you cannot be reading and bathing in that. If you're bathing in mud, you're going to be covered in mud, so to speak. So, mm. do you want to be bathed in rose petals, and that's what you're, you're the scent that you're going to be putting out into the world, so to speak? So, very, very pertinent message there in terms of if uh, and, and what people are bringing in for sure. Yeah. So, and that is just to add to that too. You know, mental nourishment is the most important thing right now. Yes. What are you feeding yourself with mentally? Because that'll trigger your emotions. And if you trigger fear, you're going to dump cortisol in your body and drop your immune system. If you're bathing in paradigms that create fear, separation, judgment, them, us, the emotional response to that is shrinking in fear. And that severely damages your physical body's immune system. And we can't afford to do that now. What we need to do is boost our immune system. We boost it by how we're feeling. We boost it by doing things that make us feel happy, watching stuff that's intellectually stimulating and bringing us hope bringing us like, yay. So Gaia TV, there's so many brilliant, brilliant, brilliant sources. And again, we can just say to the universe, bring me whatever it is I need to bathe in intellectually and mentally that will uplift me and keep my immune system strong. Because otherwise it's like discernment, discernment, discernment. Someone says, watch this, watch that. And you might just feel no or yes. No need to analyze because that's going into judgment. You just get an instinct. Like I have a deal with quantum where it's like if I'm watching something on YouTube, it's like something comes on the side and it almost flashes at me. Watch me, watch me, watch me. <laughs> and so I finish that little video and then I click there and it's, it's perfect for me to watch, you know. So quantum will get our attention and deliver us whatever it is for our highest good to know if that's our interest without us having to indulge so much in social media and all the stories and narratives there. And that's the beauty of the recoding of um, what yes. you're calling out for, what you're bringing in. So yes. two, two more questions as we finish off this very nourishing conversation today is, uh, and you've, you've shared a lot about the benefits um, so what possibilities and gifts really does this lifestyle and this way of thinking, this way of being bring to people? So we've said, you know, uh, you have so much more time because uh, to be creative because you don't need to sleep. Uh, you're lighter um, in, in many different ways. What other gifts and possibilities does this open for people? 
You know, I would like to say that when I first began on the global stage and I would say, isn't it incredible there's this energy that can take away all your hunger and you don't need to be involved in cooking or shopping or dishes or anything and you have so much time on your hands and you're free. And most people would go, no. And then we rephrased our language and I said, isn't it wonderful we have this energy that can take away all our hunger and so we are free to choose whether we want to take physical nourishment or just be source fed or do both. Everybody said both. I want to do both because they still like the pleasure and the social interaction and they don't want to live in such an extreme way. So I think the biggest gift here is freedom of choice. Like once you've locked into this and you've lived it and you know without a doubt that you have this freedom, then it's like maybe you want to take a small amount of food once a month just for fun. Or maybe I know people who have Christmas soup. I know <laughs> people who have, you know, their kids say, I miss eating with my mum and dad who are now source fed. And so the parents will have one small light meal with the children once a week maybe fruit or soup, just to bond and do that. Or they then regulate to do other things with their children that bond them, that taking physical food all the time together would do because many people share their day over the dinner table. You know, there's that breaking bread and communion and sharing. So it's freedom of choice. And I wanted to say that because I know some of your people are going, oh, it's too extreme. I don't want to do that, but I want the freedom. And that's what we are sharing here. Isn't it wonderful to have freedom of choice that you can get your nourishment direct from source or add a little bit of physical food if you want. And obviously, the deeper you go into this, the more energy you have for other things. So it seems to then stimulate your other natural abilities of clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairsentient, a lot of people tap into understanding the flow of energy and healing where I've understood the power of mutual feeding. Like mutual feeding is, I love it. First, the body. I love you, I love you, I love you. As the essence I am, body, I love you, I love you because the love is the nourishment. And then you send the I love you, I love you to the circle of your family around you. Imagine them. And then you send it out to the community. Family, I love you, I love you, I love you. As the essence being I am, I just love and appreciate you. Community, I love, I love, I love, I love and appreciate you. Everyone in my community and all that you do, thank you, I love you. Sent you in life, children of this world. Children of this world, I love you, I love you. Let me, let me just transmit this love for you to take what you want from it. All sentient life in this world, I love you, I love you, I love you. Beyond this planet, all the beings through the multiverses, I love you, 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 I love you. And when it's real, it starts to bounce back. And then all those open to love, they start to biofeedback to your source because it's come from you, this pure love back. And now we're in mutually beneficial feeding. Oh, now you've got millions and billions of sentient life just flooding you with love as you send it out and it comes back and you send it out and it comes back. And <laughs> it's just... I didn't know I could do that. I didn't know. I didn't know source feeding could be as simple because the purer the love that you engage with and bounces back to you, the more healed and whole you become because it's love that heals all. And all the healers in the world now know all they need to do is hold the frequency of love and that body in front of them will suck that love and take that love to do whatever healing it needs on whatever level it needs. The love needs to be pure, and the lifestyle ensures purity and the intention. So that almost answers my next question or my final question, which was be was the possibilities and the gifts that this lifestyle 
this path that you've taken, that it's opened up to you. And as you said, you know, what you get back from what you, what you gift out in a, a life of service is, I mean, it glows from you. Do you want to add anything to that? Look, I think we take everything too seriously. I think one of the things I've understood is the nature of holographic creation. Like this bubble of reality we call duality is just a hologram like in the Matrix movies. But when they unhook from that Matrix, they go into something else again. But the movie of the Matrix series touches on this. And when you go to stasis, and I I love stasis, it's like a conscious unhooking of all the holograms. The ascended master reality is a hologram. The interdimensional beings, the UFOs, the non-craft, the Merkabahs we travel in, the, you know, because most people move through space and time without any craft at all. It's just an extension of our own energy field, knowing that we are vast and multidimensional, so we just expand consciousness. So we're not bound by space and time. We are truly magnificent. So I just say to people, open to ask, to feel, to know, to experience the magnificence of your own human design because we are an energy construct unlike anything that's ever been created in our universe before and we haven't even begun to understand our true potential but we've got to feel it, not just think about it. And we can open to feel it, but it means daily unhooking from the man-made hologram of duality so we can open to what else needs to present itself to us when we are free of any agenda. Because as long as you have an agenda, that's all the quantum field can deliver to you. Ah. Oh. Okay, I love and I strongly believe in our our brilliance and exploring our brilliance. And uh, you are the epitome of of a life that has been spent exploring brilliance and taking it into the world in many, many different ways. So I thank you for for sharing today. And of course, I will put links uh, underneath this video and on the podcast because there are, there's so much information and so many wonderful, wonderful nourishing videos on your YouTube channel, um, on your website. There are some incredible online programs. And of course, you've written so many books as well. So there's, uh, so people can continue to bathe in this wonderful energy and space that we've created in this Zoom room. So thank you so, so <laughs> much, uh, Jasmine, you. for your time. And I'm sure people want to just stay in excuse me stay in that stillness for a few minutes after yeah. watching this can we do it now just take a few moments of stillness Absolutely. and silence together just close our eyes and just let go of the words and just be here in the field with the breath but with every breath just breathe in more than oxygen imagine you are drinking of the purest currents of love that are vibrating everywhere. Just know that you can re-listen to this podcast and feel in your heart your reaction, your spontaneous reaction to anything we've shared. And if your heart feels good about it, just say yes, yes, yes. Make this my experiential truth in the right way in time for me. just sense this quantum benevolence that is always there within us, around us, serving us, so wise and loving. Just take a few final moments. What is your prayer in your heart that you can really say, spontaneous yeses to.
Just expand and sense the millions and millions of people now who are supporting this up-leveling process as all our systems on earth are upgraded so they operate for the highest good of all. Send so many wise, loving, pure-hearted people transmitting so many beautiful patterns of energy through our world. A new sisterhood, a new brotherhood of unity, conscious people. Perhaps we finalize with saying in our heart of hearts, I am ready to be up leveled now into the next perfect pattern of energy for me. A pattern of energy that is operating always for the highest good of all sentient life through all realms. Allow me to merge into this new pattern with joy and ease and grace in the right way in time. And if source feeding on all levels of my being is for me this life, then again I ask that this happen that I merge with this matrix with joy, with ease, with grace, in the right way and time for me. Again, in a way that is beneficial for my family, my community in this world. In your heart, just say yes, 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 spontaneously to this. When you're ready, just slowly opening your eyes, having a little stretch. Yes. And I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you thank to you, Carol thank for you, thank the space you. you're holding in the field and the possibility hub. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. much.